Okay, so talking about number three on the FIP quiz, um, you, you have three equations that you're working with, and the first two are your sums of forces, which you've had all along. Now you have a third equation to work with, which is your mu k equation. So one of the first things you want to do is really just get all those down and look at what you're going to need to create expressions for, because you're going to do multiple substitutions is what's going to end up happening. So if we do sum of forces on the y, we have fn, whoops, up, fgy, and f applied. Okay, and those are both down. If you look at sum of force, and these are all equal to zero. Let me make that clear. Um, sum of forces on the x, fx this direction, f of gx that direction, still equal to zero. And then you have, and I, I generally set this off to the side, I'm not sure why, it's just habit, I guess, um, equals fs max over fn. So in this case, we're looking for mass. Um, we have more things to work with on the y-axis. It's a good bet, therefore, that that's the equation we're going to end up using. But we're basically going to need information from all, well, actually, we don't. In this case, we don't need the, because we're given the force of static friction. If we were not given the force of static friction, um, we would need that. Could we do this with the x-axis? I'm not sure. I have to think about it. Sometimes you can, you can do the final solve with either of the equations starting from your sum of forces. Sometimes you can't. So here, um, if we assume that we're going to use the, the y-axis, um, we have this. We have the means to find this. Well, we're going to need this and we're going to need this. Okay. So if we do... Um, Fn equals Fs over mu s. And then that's something, because we have both of these, we can sub in here. So now we have 0 equals Fs over mu s plus mg, and that would be cosine theta. We have gravity, we have theta, we have Fs, we have mu s plus force applied, and we have that. At this point, we have everything we need to solve for gravity. Negative of mass gravity equals Fs over mu s plus F applied. This is where, and if you look at my key, you'll notice, because we're going to get into even bigger, heavier, crazier substitutions. What I do for myself with these is I bracket them and I remind myself, this is going down, this has to be a negative, this is going down, this has to be a negative. I carry those arrows through at this point because at this point you're going to get into spaces where you're doing heavy substitution and then rearranging and it's really easy to lose track of what should be a negative. And I screwed up, that's actually... Isn't it negative mg cosine? Hold on, yep, it is. I screwed up several things there. Yeah, I'm playing the mistake game without even meaning to. So that's normal force. And this is mg cosine theta. Okay, sorry about that. So what those arrows tell me, see how easy it is to screw that up? Um, is that the magnitude of that force is going to be an opposite sign from the applied force. So now, and I'm going to get rid of my x-axis because it's pretty clear that I can do this without it. If I want to solve for mass... What I have is mass equals uh, force of static friction over mu s, and that's going to be up, plus force applied, which is going to be a negative, divided by negative 1 times g cosine theta. And that's going to give me my mass. And what that gives me is an entire solution for the problem basically in one piece. And, and now we are getting to the point where you're going to get points on a test for showing me that. 
you need to be able to show a solution. So if you screw something up in the intermediate, but you don't have a solution that's solved algebraically for that final variable, you don't get the partial points. You have so to be able to do those substitutions. You that's a, that's a good way to check yourself, but you need to be in the habit of doing the substitution. Because when we get into the 4D stuff, you'll get into positions where you have no alternative. You have to be able to substitute because you have to be able to manipulate things out of there. Um, you have to be able to factor things out and rearrange. So you need to be able to do a solution that algebraically gets you to a solve. So I can't use, I can't just leave it as one force and not Um, You can do that to check yourself, but you need to be able to do the algebra. Too. So the, the way you're accustomed to doing it, which is, well, I solved for normal force and then I plugged normal force in here. If legal, it gets you the answer. What I'm saying is if you somehow make a mistake in that normal force, if you, if you screwed something up and something went wrong someplace, this is part of the basis of your partial credit, having that solved for all those substitutions. So, and, and, and I will often, like, if I'm getting something and it's weird, I'll check myself by, you know, I'll compute the normal force, jot it over to the side. Um, these are going to get bigger and uglier than this. So I'm trying to prepare you for what's to come. Um, 4D is the one where I've gotten feedback before, like, well, I, this was all easy until the algebra got weird. Right, which is why we're trying to build the algebra scale now before it gets weird. And hopefully we build it so well that we get to 4D and you guys are all like, ah, this is a breeze. That'd be great. I'd love that. So, okay. Um, with that, I will post the key and you will work on calculations.